Zader in Washington. Thank you very much, Doug. Greg? All right, the debate over reforming America's health care system front and center on Fox News Sunday today. Responses from both sides demonstrating the sharp divide over the president's desire for the creation of a government-sponsored health care plan. Take a listen. America has the finest health care system in the world. Uh, we have some problems with access and with cost, which can address without wrecking uh, the best health care system in the world. Well, the president won't sign a bill unless it lowers costs for everyone. And he believes that the best way to lower costs is to have some competition in the marketplace to make sure that we actually begin to bring down the overhead costs for providing insurance to everyone. So how will all of this play out? And can the president's plan be revenue neutral? We want your comments, by the way, on this next topic. So tweet us at twitter.com slash Greg Jarrett or Julie Banderas. Uh, meanwhile, we're joined by Republican Congressman and physician Michael Burgess of Texas. And Julian Epstein joins us, former Democratic chief counsel who isn't a doctor, but uh, and he doesn't play <laughs> one on the TV. TV. All right. You would have no, made a great doctor, though. All right. Uh, Congressman Burgess, um, Newsweek's Robert Samuelson, uh, editor, columnist who writes about economics, called the president's health care plan naive, hypocritical, and dishonest. I'll quote further. We'll put it up on the screen. The president keeps saying it's imperative to control runaway health spending. He's right. The trouble is what's being promoted as health care reform almost certainly won't suppress spending and quite probably will do the opposite. In fact, the pres he argues that the president's claims of cost cutting are really just a fraction of the estimated $1.2 trillion cost, he so he called them pretend. Are they pretend? What do you say? Well, if we're talking about the, uh, the issues that were raised when the uh, several interest groups went down to the White House a few years ago, the efficiencies that the insurance industry and pharma uh, talked about, in fact, those are things they should be doing anyway, and so they'll just be scored as part of the baseline by the Congressional Budget Office. So I don't think you can actually take credit for those when you try to price in a new, a new health care plan. The fact of the matter is, this is going to cost the American people a lot of money. That is one of the things that has come to light in the past two weeks. And the disappointing thing is, in spite of the, the intense cost and the intense spending, we're only going to be covering about a third of the people who are uninsured, and if you believe some studies, we'll be moving a lot of people off of their employer-sponsored insurance, which they like, into uh, some sort of government plan. Remember, yeah. the central tenet of the presidency went through this was, if you like what you have, you can keep it. He also said the one thing he won't tolerate is the status quo. It's very, very difficult to reconcile those two positions. Yeah. All right, we'll get to that in a moment. Julie, I want to get you a fair shot at this. You know, the, these provisions uh, to cut costs, they're, you know, bundled payment to hospitals and evidence-based guidelines, electronic record keeping, these are scattershot measures that were tried in the past and they barely affected health care spending. So, I mean, really, isn't it a bit disingenuous for the president to claim he can cut costs now? I don't think so. If you look at the private health insurance system, and again, Mitch McConnell's comments I think would be appropriate if we were talking about health care delivery. The debate is about health care insurance, a system which is broken. And I think the health care insurance system right now wastes 25 cents on the dollar, over $100 billion just in underwriting and promotional costs. It's one of the most inefficient systems alone uh, in, in health care in the world. It fails to cover 45 million Americans, uh, most middle class Americans who have to pay twelve to $14,000 a year on health insurance premiums are getting squeezed to the point of bankruptcy. It's a system that's very, very inefficient. I think the president has outlined in a report uh, two ways in which costs can be seriously controlled. One is by cutting the enormous administrative waste in the private system. If you look at the Medicare system and public run systems, they're much, much more efficient than our private health insurance systems. The other way we can do it is through the, uh, is, through, is by providing, is by providing competition through the system. I mean, if the health insurance industry right now believes that it is really doing a good job in providing Providing Americans the best deal possible. They shouldn't fear a public option. And in right. fact, the public overwhelmingly, according to polls, wants to see universal health care. And, and, and even if it means. Yeah, but I'm not sure they fully appreciate the cost and the long term impact, which is what the well, Congressman was talking the polls about show a moment that they ago. Do. Uh, the Congressman, the, they do, Greg. Congressman, the president insists his plan will not threaten private insurance, and yet the government, don't you know, will have the power to dictate prices to doctors and hospitals, thus charging cheaper premiums than private insurance. So won't employers then dump their workers onto the government public plan? 
who knows? It looks very likely that they will, but I think you've hit on the central theme. This is all about control. This is not about improving anyone's health or even improving anyone's access to health care. It is about this administration's constant strive and reach and grasp to, to take greater control over our daily lives. They've done it with our banks, they did it with your car manufacturers, they closed your dealerships, next they wanted your doctor's office. I think it's time to tell them to stop. Julian, last question to you. You know, the president keeps promising that if you like your health care plan, the government, and I'll quote here, I'll quote the president, the government won't make you change plans. But you know what? There's nothing in the current bills, I looked at them, that prevent employers from unloading their coverage, forcing people to go into a public plan. And if employers have to pay more than the government, plan, they're just going to dump it. Well, Greg, there's nothing that forces employers to provide health insurance anyway. And, and every small business person, the business roundtable, says that the employer-based system is broken. I think Dr. Burgess would probably admit, it, would concede that. So there is nothing that forces anybody. If you if you like your private insurance, you can keep it. If, if you want to go to the public option, you can. The fact of the matter is that health care spending right now is taking... 20%, almost 20% of the GDP on a glide path to go to 33% of the GDP. It's going to bankrupt us all. The health insurance system is not only incredibly efficient, it doesn't serve tens of millions of Americans. And what the health insurance wants to do is create this, is keep in place the sweetheart deal that is making its executives, you know, very, very rich, but it's misserving the public. All right. Public option is simply going to provide the competition here, here, here. that the cartel and the health insurance industry really needs. All right. Quick, quick, doctor. The one, the one way to control costs is to put people in charge of their own money. And they are not going to be able to do that under the president's plan because those consumer-directed plans, those health savings accounts, are not going to be qualified plans under the president's plan. All right. Secretary Sebelius as much oh. as admitted that in our committee last week. We're going to turn this whole thing on its head, and we're really not going to solve any problems. We'll, uh, I, we'll I leave it at that. Got to do that. choice lets people create Congressman money, Michael Burgess. How, money how they want to do it, and this is about create, keeping in place. No, a you're going to prevent them from the spending insurance. their own money in the way they want to do it. That is precisely the president's plan. I no, I think the president's plan is to give people the choice. But let me just say that Medicare and Medicaid are the main reasons the government's long-term finances are a bit shambles right now. So do we really want another government plan? I'll, I'll but they're much, much more efficient, Greg, than the, public system, than the private system. No, 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 they Medicare are not more efficient. Medicare and Medicaid no, stop, are a mess. Yes, they, are. They, they, they are. are not more efficient. The, they are not more efficient. They don't control, they don't contribute anything to the cost of capital. They've got a $30 trillion unfunded liability. They don't care Dr. any Burgess, of the interest on respect, that. No, no right, private industry respect, could function like that. Oh, boy, I'm getting a hard this rap. Julian Epstein, Congressman you, Michael Burgess. You Maybe audio can keep your microphones this open during the commercial today. break. They're absolutely more efficient. Thanks. Far less Thanks. Quick. Let's put the question to the